So thanks a lot for having us here. Um, we've been out. I think the, one of the key reasons is obviously to, to share a little bit about NEC, but we've been out to a lot of events over this year. And, and when I ask the question, you know, who's NEC Australia, and whether that be in a career event or in one of the lecture theatres, I think we're lucky to ever get a couple of hands ever um, pop up there. Or if somebody does, they remember us from a fridge or a microwave or some sort of a product that their grandparents or, you know, older uncles and aunties have in a, in a garage. So I really wanted to um, come along today and um, share a little bit more about what NEC Australia is today uh, and hopefully give you some more insights into that. We've also got Lisa um, Lamb with us, who's one of our current IT graduates, um, who towards the end of the session will share her experiences of what it's like to be a grad at NEC uh, as well. Let's skip that. So one of the um, key questions we also ask is, who's NEC? What are we? Uh, and often they'll even refer to us, what's NEC? So NEC is a, we're a Japanese based company um, and we've been around for over a century and we do everything ranging from underwater to the sky. And you'll see um, on the screen here, we've got um, things like submarine cabling, transportation, satellite, hospitality, um, the list goes on and on. So we work in many, many different verticals right across the world. Oops, let me just, I think that might have been on the screen there, my apologies. Now, what we do in each of our different countries across the world does, um, does vary. So the focus areas does change. Um, and I'll take you through what we do uh, more so in Australia there. But what we are finding over time is that our customers, when they're coming to us with solutions or IT solutions that they want us to create nowadays, um, they're quite complex solutions. So it could be something like, uh, can you help us to create a whole ICT infrastructure and backbone to support a new entertainment precinct uh, or a venue? So what we'll do is work with them to introduce things like smart kiosks um, using some of our world-class biometrics um, technology so that when that consumer or when that visitor to that stadium is going there, they get that uh, seamless transition from you know, when they're entering the venue to when they leave. Uh, some of our other customers might come to us now around things like smart transport um, and ticketing systems. It could also be something in the agricultural area. So we have had customers come to us asking us to help them automate or create a digitized smart farm. So how could we work with them to uh, increase their tomato growth crop yield um, or their end-to-end -end product that they uh, release? And so using things like big data analytics, um, drone technology and AI, we can work with those customers um, to create those end-to-end -end solutions uh, as well. But there are so many uh, that we can talk about and there's no way that I can cover them all today. So just wanted to introduce those few things because I think a lot of times people don't necessarily recognize NEC because our brand uh, isn't on uh, everything, not like we used to be. Here in Australia, so we started in 1969 um, and now have 1500 um, employees. And our key areas of focus are around communication and display. So if anyone's ever been to some of the universities, a lot of the lectures that you're um, at will probably be on NEC displays and, and solutions. Um, for those that might be in the Melbourne area, if you've been to the National Gallery of Victoria and seen some of the artwork by um, Anadol Refik um, there, that's some of our, our technology being used. Uh, and we look at customer experience and customer service. So we've got customer context solution centers across this uh, business that support many different customers. Uh, we've got networking and infrastructure, and then also, which I've already touched on, you know, some of that safety and security. So whether that be around biometrics, AI, smart technology, smart trans, um, tra uh, transportation, the list goes on and on. But these are some of the areas that as a graduate at NEC Australia, um, you may be working in or working with projects that are related uh, to those. 
Now, again, as a graduate in NEC Australia, you will be working with our technology, but we also partner with many leading technology partners to create those end-to-end -end solutions for our customers. Um, and you can see just a number of those uh, on the screen here. I think Lisa will share uh, with you as a grad, you could, you know, if you're working in that cloud or security section, you might be doing some certifications or building that capability in AWS or Microsoft or Fortinet. Um, but if you're looking at more around network and infrastructure, you might, you might be focusing on certifications around Cisco um, and many others uh, that you consume. And I think that's really something that does set us apart um, from other graduate programs. Here in Australia, so we've got a 18 month uh, graduate program. And for 2023, our graduate program will be based in Victoria, in ACT, in South Australia and NT. So we're looking at roughly 15 to 20 graduates for that 2023 intake, and that will commence in February um, next year. Generally, what you'll find is, and it does vary from state to state, depending on um, the specialties that they have in those areas. But for the most part, what you uh, would be doing is completing six month rotations across three different areas in the business, um, really allowing you to get that holistic understanding of what NEC does. Um, and I know a lot of the feedback that our, our previous and current graduates have said that is it gives them an opportunity to play in a few different areas, because sometimes when you're coming out of university, you're not quite sure exactly what you want to do. Um, so it gives you that, uh, that opportunity to really play and get an idea and a sense of what is it that you love. And then when at the end of the program, you know, you can be applying for the roles that are really of interest to you and where you want to continue to develop and grow in. Just will make a disclaimer there, though, as I said, depending on the state that you're working in, that does um, vary. But obviously, throughout the application process, we would take you through that step by step. Um, at the moment, we do have our applications open for Canberra. Um, and also two graduate roles in Victoria for our headquarter Victorian SA and NT grads. We're actually going to hold off and not start the recruitment process for those until mid-year. So we have an expression of interest available online at the moment, which I'll take you and show you um, how to get to that later. So you can jump on, pop that expression of interest in, and then when that comes um, to the middle of the year, we'll send you that notification and you can have a look at what's available um, and apply then. In terms of our application process, so I'm sure Lisa might even uh, touch on that a little bit and just what it meant for her um, or what it looked like for her. But for the 2023 intake, um, our application process will be that short initial application uh, online. And having, I am one of the key people that actually go through and read through all of those applications. Uh, and you wouldn't believe how many times we ask that question, why would you like to work for NEC? And often it's because it's a big reputable company and, and that's why. What I guess when you're answering those questions, really think about why is it that you want to work for us? What was it that really um, connected you to us that, that where you took the time to jump on our website and actually have a look about us and spend and invest that time creating that um, application? Um, how, how can we really help you? I've got a lot of creative license when it comes to developing the graduate program and evolving that over time. Um, we're only in our fourth intake ever. So we have a, a lot of opportunity to really build on that um, and tailor that to suit our, our graduates. So the first step, as you'll see up there, stage one, is to create and submit a short video. Um, we don't use any particular external tools um, for that. We just get you to do that on your phone or your camera um, and submit that through a link uh, to us. And generally, we ask two questions. One, what do you want to get out of the graduate program? So what are you hoping to achieve from it? And two, um, general, what, what area of technology or IT um, are you passionate about and interested in? Because all of that information really helps us as we go through that uh, recruitment process to 
uh, pair you with the right areas across the business uh, if obviously business needs meet them. The second stage is to attend a virtual or face-to-face -face group, group assessment centre. Um, and that's really just to give you the opportunity to hear a little bit more about NEC um, and, make, and, and I guess really understand whether that's a right fit for you, but also for us to get to know um, you and how you work in a group um, and just have some fun with us for an hour or two um, and learn a little bit more about you. Stage three is to attend a panel interview. And that's obviously where we'll start to go through and talk to you about um, what have you done at university? Um, what are those extracurricular activities that you do? What do you enjoy? Um, you know, what, the, what are the things that you are passionate about that you don't necessarily get to ask in some of those big group um, assessment centers? If there's any questions as well, please pop them in the, the chat in the Q&A and I can, um, uh, definitely address them afterwards as well. Uh, if you want to, I, I guess, if you want to learn more, uh, we've got the NEC uh, website where we've got a whole host of information. So just some of those case studies that I spoke about earlier, plus many, many more are, are on there. You can follow along on our social. So we've got LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and, and YouTube. So a great way to really understand all those verticals that we work across um, and how your passions and the things that you're really interested in um, and pairing that with IT might fit in. Um, you can check out our graduate stories and reviews on, on the Grad Australia site and we'll be adding to, uh, a few more of those shortly. Um, feel free to connect with myself and our uh, recruiters at any time. We're more than happy to answer and um, go through application process, what the rotations look like, um, any of that sort of information at any time. We've set up a dedicated email, so graduate.program at nec.com.au. So feel free to um, pop through any questions in there. Uh, and always you can reach out to our grads and, and have a chat uh, as well at any time. I think like Optus um, mentioned, our graduate program, uh, because of some of the customers that we work with, uh, is for Australian citizens or permanent residents. However, saying that we also do have other entry level roles that may, um, that will, would suit graduates um, that are open to everybody. So always visit that nec.com.au website. There's a careers page there. Um, and we'll also uh, um, advertise them on the Great Australia site. Um, feel free to keep your options open and, and have a look at what's available um, on there. So I'll hand you over now though to Lisa to share a little bit about her experience in the graduate program. Thanks, Amy. Hello, everyone. My name is Lisa. Uh, I'm an information technology graduate based in Perth, West Australia, uh, and I majored in information systems at Curtin University. Uh, so I'll talk briefly about my experience uh, in the graduate program at NEC uh, and give you some insights that maybe you can take away with you when you enter your own graduate programs. Uh, so yeah, I've been with the company just over eight months now, and I'm currently working in the network provisioning team under digital and shared services. Uh, so what do we do in provisioning? We mainly deal with the provisioning of network connectivity to customer premises uh, through local area and wide area network equipment uh, configuration. Uh, so, you know, your routers, switches, and your circuits. Uh, my experience so far in this rotation Overall, I can say it has been a very challenging yet rewarding experience. Uh, I think that it has really pushed me technically, uh, which is good. Uh, you know, I've had a chance to work on live network devices. Uh, I've also been involved in a project to set up a network monitoring and reporting solution um, from test to production uh, and configured Windows and Linux uh, servers in the process. Uh, which is all invaluable experience to me. So I'm looking to go down a system administration path. Uh, and going through each rotation, I've met a lot of clever people and have gained insights into different areas of IT. You'll find IT is extremely broad and there's lots of different pathways that you could potentially specialize in. Uh, recently, I've also done a bit of studying in terms of courses and certifications. 
uh, and I think most companies will offer some form of a certification or a learning pathway, uh, you know, if the particular cert or skill that you're looking to get. Uh, and I highly recommend looking into getting certified. Uh, lastly, I guess my advice for other graduates, you know, it's not as scary as you think. Uh, when you come into a graduate role or position, there's generally an understanding that you're coming in with maybe not as much experience. Uh, and if you do get stuck on something, I think most people will be more than willing to kind of help you out and guide you along. Uh, for me, this period is a time of learning and self-reflection, you know, where you think about where you want to go in your career uh, and how to progress, et cetera. Uh, and as graduates, you know, we often want to do well. Uh, we want to meet our deadlines and put our best foot forward for the company. Uh, but this is also a chance for you as a graduate to kind of gauge the company to see if they align with your own career goals and values, which I think is very important. Uh, so yeah, it's a two-way thing and a good experience overall to gain those technical and soft skills. So that was me, guys. Uh, Amy, did you have anything to add? No, I think I see there is a couple of questions there that we can address, but uh, okay. Elliot, I think we're just, just, just under or just three under. minutes. You got plenty of time to answer the questions that have come through Let's um so there's there's one specifically about just locations amy and, and lisa in regards to um if you hire like graduate positions in tasmania i guess where else in australia you're hiring for graduates? yeah so the, the the key areas for 2023 so it does change from year to year the key areas for 2023 will be victoria um canberra uh adelaide and darwin um, we don't have a, a huge presence in, in Tasmania. A lot of our staff that work on Tasmanian projects are based in Victoria. There's about four people over in Tassie. Um, but we do a lot of um, commute uh, as we need to, and a lot of that can happen virtually. Um, however, saying that, you know, uh, I think like Optus mentioned earlier as well, we've got that very hybrid um, approach. So it's two days generally in the office and three days um, working from home, but that can change. Um, yeah, depending on, I guess, the projects that you're working on, the customers that you're working with, um, and some of those really fun projects that you might be involved in. Fantastic. Um, and there was a question about, more specifically around your recruitment process and filming short videos. So. Is there any tips? Because I mean, it might be something that people, I know when I started working on Zoom full time, it was something that I wasn't very comfortable with speaking yeah. to the camera all the time. Is there any kind of tips that you can give on how to put together like a quick, short, sharp kind of <laughs> short video for the we're not, I tell you what, we're not looking for that professional finish or anything like that. If you do it, it's amazing. It you don't need a tripod or anything? Oh. No, I think one of the most, one of the most memorable ones I've ever seen is someone actually include a, a blooper in the end where their dog came flying in and platypus on the decking. That was, I've never forgotten that. But I think be yourself. That's the key thing. You know, many times we see people just reading off the NEC website um, verbatim and saying it, you know, exactly as it is. We really want to understand, you know, from you, what are those things in IT that you really enjoy and are passionate about? Is it IT? Is it biometrics? Is it networking? What is it that you love? Is it the social value that it can add? What is that? Um, if, it's, if it's simply, if it's on your phone, um, no editing, that is absolutely fine. But I guess think about what's behind you as well. We've seen many beds with lots of clothes piled up, um, lots of noise and things in the background. So just, yeah, make sure that it's clear. It doesn't have to be super polished or super edited. We want to learn about you and understand you. And that's the main thing. Brilliant. Fantastic. That's about all we've got time for today, team. Um, Amy and Lisa, if you just want to stay on the, just stay on for a little bit, there's a couple of questions that you could probably answer directly oh. that have come through the Q&A. Um, <laughs> but again, thank you so much for your time. It was really insightful to i've learned a lot um there's a lot of employees here that i don't work with personally so i always like learning about the different employees as well so thank you so much you're welcome all the best everyone thanks everyone bye